I've got a fucking theory on this, and I want to run it by you two, and I want I want to run it by the audience. Please, because well. I ca I cannot figure out that fucking city. Everybody <clears throat> has something crazy to say about Seattle. I think that this isn't just about Seattle. It's Oregon and it's Antifa at, at large, and it's uh, like young white liberal people. I think that they have oppression FOMO. You know what I mean? Oh, I, I don't know not, what that is. Uh, FOMO is fear of missing out. Like it's a they, oh, okay. they, they don't they feel like they've been excluded from the clout or whatever you want to call it from from being oppressed. Sure. So here's what they did. Maybe <clears throat> what ten or fifteen years ago, the people that we refer to as millennials and and why we have these feelings about the millennial attitude in general is because they've never really gone through anything that we consider tough. Mm -hmm. Right. So they, in, they invented all these problems for themselves. Right. And then everybody was like, mm, no, shut the fuck up. You're weak. Get the fuck out of here. So yeah. to combat that, <clears throat> they have co-opted the oppression of other people. Right. To become their cause. And look, I, standing up for the oppressed, that is what the special forces motto in this country isn't, hey, get fucked. You don't look like me. It's liberate the oppressed or liberator of the oppressed, the oppressed yeah. leader. So uh, that that's. That's good. That's a good thing to believe. But taking that on yourself like that is very, very bizarre to me. It's like, imagine how insulting it is to be a black person marching in the streets for equal rights and have some blubbering white liberal girl come up crying and hugging you and apologizing and, and unloading the, the burden of how she feels about your plight onto you. Oh, you're trying. <laughs> I mean, that is the most insulting shit I've ever heard of in my fucking life. Yeah, it's nonsense. I mean, the only agree. the only thing that I can pin it on is these people have fear of missing out. They don't they, like everybody's oppressed, but me, man, it's not fair. This it's is, not this fair that you're actually, not oppressed. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this is actually a great theory. Jesus fucking Christ! <laughs> and you, I, like, I, I now that you're saying it out loud, I kind of understand it. Where it's like, uh, I mean, not that you would fucking go and do this shit, but. The, the fear of missing out on anything in life where you always think that, oh, this generation had a better time than we did, you know? Like, I always look back and be like, man, I bet the 70s were fucking awesome, right? They probably weren't. Um, I was, I, I, well, I you was, could get away with a lot of stuff and ecstasy was legal, so. Yeah, but I mean, for, like, all in all, because I was, my wife's mom is in town, and she's a child of the 60s, and she was protesting for, you know, Vietnam and all that other shit, right? And so I was talking to her about it, and I was like, is it any different than it was in the 60s and today? And she goes, no, it's just different causes. And she goes, it's just as much, except for today, with the social media, with Twitter and everything, it is in your fucking face all day long. Versus back then, if you wanted to see protests or riots, you physically had to turn on the news, and there was you had three channels to watch it, mm -hmm. uh, or read about it in a, in a hard newspaper <laughs> that some kid was throwing in your lawn for a nickel a day, and... And it made more sense. She was like, your anger grows, um, you know, wilder and wilder because you, you're, it's just constantly in your face all day. You well, can't turn on your phone. Yeah, you yeah. can't turn on your television. You can't open up your computer. All of this rage is just jammed inside your face all day where she was like, back then, you physically had to go out to the rallies to get raged, you know, just to, to get enraged about uh, certain causes and things. But uh, now you can just sit behind your fucking keyboard and then go out and try to fuck shit up. Yeah, I mean, it's I, I don't mind uh, half of that scenario, which is where more people are getting directly involved in, in this stuff, because I mm -hmm. think that's important. I've, I've gotten a lot of good responses from the stuff we've been seeing, and I've gotten a lot of weird responses. The weird ones are people asking me why I'm more critical of like white conservative people and cops and things like that than I am of black protesters and the dumb shit that they believe. Like the 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 monolith that all cops are bad or oh that's easy yeah I mean that's it's easy e to figure that out it's because they set a higher standard already so you're gonna expect them to sit to that higher standard whereas well, everyone else they've lowered their sons to a, such a lower standard you can't really expect more of them especially the police like I expect more out of police than I do yeah. and 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 people who support them and the other part of it is it's not my job to tell black people what to do about their struggle. You know what I mean? Like, look, it's up to black leaders to call people out for it's up to people like John Jones, for yeah. example, who's doing that. Yeah. And uh, 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 there's uh, thousands of these people that are doing this shit to call out that community for doing the stupid shit they're doing. It's my job as somebody who one speaks primarily to a 
uh, military first responder audience that leans conservative and as somebody who is a former military member myself and has worked for the government and all this stuff, it's my job to explain what I understand about this situation to people who think more like I do, right? Because there's a lot of nuance here. It doesn't, if, if we all, like, imagine a bunch of cops hold a town hall and just have an instructional period for black people to tell them what they should be doing, right. and then they don't listen to anything, and then they just leave. How, how do you think that's going to work out? <laughs> it's going to work out the same way that uh, that a black person yelling at some rural white person that's poor about their plight. You're not going to hear that shit. You know what I mean? Right. It's up to people in your own community to fucking take charge and find the balance here, right? It's not. It's not. It's never going to happen if we're lining up on opposite sides and yelling at each other.